Every sacrifice made makes it stronger and stronger. Its presence is felt around the towns and the surrounding area. The air is thick with a black purplish fog that never seems to lighten. Soon, it won't need sacrifices. The environment seems misshapen by his aura as if it's now feeding on its surroundings. The adventurers catch wind of this evil place and set out to get to the bottom of it. They travel to the cavern in the middle of what used to be a fruitful forest. As they stare into the darkness that awaits for them inside the cavern, the fog ominously clears. As they make their way through the cavern, where they can hear the cultists worshipping this deity, they notice the walls covered in skulls. A few of the walls collapse as they make their way down, revealing even more skulls within. There is enough flesh on their face to tell they died an agonizing death. The adventurers realize the cave has fallen completely silent. They notice an opening ahead, a section of the cave overly lit with torches. In the center stands a mountain of skulls. It's clear that these skulls are hiding a structure that could well be a hundred meters tall. But all that's exposed now is the final floor. To the adventurer's surprise, they reach the top only to find a corpse of the so-called god. It too suffered before its death. There are signs of a desperate struggle, as the creature obviously knew its end was near. The adventurers notice that the bones are still warm, as if its flesh, muscles and guts had just been torn away from him leaving nothing behind but its bones. The torches start to go off, one by one. As the lights fade, a voice speaks from the shadows. How unfortunate you had to beg this day to help these poor villagers. There is still enough light in the room for them to notice some of the corpses slowly standing up with their eyes flickering a green flame. In the center of the sacrifice pit, a figure begins to emerge. The more it begins to resemble a figure, the harder it becomes for the adventurers to breathe. Another voice speaks out. Enough with these false deities. I will give these worthless souls something truly powerful to worship. Welcome to another episode of Frankie D Crafter. Today, I really wanted to continue on the Catacomb Dungeon, but I don't want to spend a lot of time or money on the skulls. So I started plotting, and this is what I came up with. For this project, I want a pool of skulls but I don't want to use up my whole inventory for it. I want a detail that I could easily clone. Something that makes it look like I put in more time than I actually did. So, let's start by making a stamp of sorts. I'm not reinventing the wheel here. I'm going for something simple. Something I can get a lot of mileage from. When I make the copies, I make sure to touch them up a little bit and add small details here and there. This is still better than actually making them one by one and basically wasting all my beads. And I know I can print them, but this is still much faster. I figure most of these are gonna go on a wall. Cold porcelain and polymer clay work the best. I'm using the cheapest thing I can find here. I usually try to avoid this type of foam but I can make it work, at least for this build.
I make a few adjustments though. I tear up a few areas, add some steps, and some bricks. All I do here is just hide the fact that this is cheap foam. I hope you save some of those Halloween decorations because I want to make this thing look like it's sitting on a pile of skulls. Let's add some filler. Aluminum is your best friend here. Let's also add the corpse of our deity. These are all scavenged bones from Halloween decorations. With the exception of the main skull. I didn't have anything that looked quite right, so I had to settle for this. I like the terrain to tell a story. What I'm aiming for here, something in between a tomb and a worship temple. Don't glue anything to the aluminum yet. We will be decorating that with skulls. First, I want to maybe add some strength to the foam with plaster. I have this crap laying around so I might as well use it, right? And this is definitely gonna need a coat or two of Mod Podge. Now, when I said I wanted this to look like it's sitting on a pile of skulls, I meant it. I need piles of skulls in this, but I'm not looking to use up all my skulls. To get around this problem, I'm adding some aluminum foil again. Now, let's add some skulls. But first, the building itself looks really boring. I need this to coop up. But, we can't just rely on skulls to make our crafts look good. Do I look like any of the crafting brothers to you? I didn't think so. But also mainly because I don't have that many skulls left, so... That's besides the point. So I need to add some bricks, and some of these. I wasn't really feeling the project until I added these. Thanks to a good friend of mine, Ryan, from Patreon. Ryan D... Ryan... 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 I'll get his name right one of these days. So. Make sure to give him a thanks in the comment section below. Don't worry, the skulls are coming. I swear, I wouldn't lie to you. The problem is, well, I don't have any skulls. I'm sorry. No skulls, no project. Cancel the project. It's time to retire. I'm out. Peace. I quit. Nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, we're making another stamp. All you need is one skull. And your choice of clay. Hopefully. And this is my favorite skull here. Now, I will admit this isn't perfect, but I like the end results. So I'm gonna go with it. So let's add some skulls to this. But first, have you noticed in some paintings how um, not all the details are filled in? And there's just enough detail for you to kind of put the picture together without the artist having to actually fill it all out for you. That's essentially what we're going to do here. Except we're doing it through sculpting so it's a little bit harder to get away with. So the idea is to stamp the skulls but not have it look detailed enough. Like every, every skull doesn't need to be perfectly detailed. It just needs to fool the eye into thinking, oh this is definitely a pool of skulls. That's my uh, sculpting tip for the day. To make sure this works, I go back and define some of the skulls eye sockets better. I even add piles of skulls on the outside of the structure. Repetition is key for artwork. That's another tip I guess. Dude, we're being artists today, we're, we're on a roll, let's go. You could be the judge, and let me know if I pulled it off or not. If not, I'll have to quit my channel and make a guest appearance as the third brother in the Crafting Brothers channel. And nobody wants that. 
Their niece already paints better than them. Wow, she actually paints better than you too. Oh, ouch. Wow. Well, no, actually she is really good. Anyways, well, I guess I only have one thing to say about the painting on this project. It would be a mistake to try to paint all of the skulls the same exact way. I also learned this trick from drawing and painting. We want to trick the eye, right? To make this more believable, we are going to concentrate on three key points. First, atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, sure, but where's the pizzazz? We want to give this more depth and grind by making the skulls closer to the surface, more detailed and a lot lighter. While everything on the edges and the lower parts remain dark. This leads into the next point, movement. We want to guide the audience's eyes through the shadows and lights. We want them to focus on what we want them to see. Let their mind fill in the rest. And lastly, composition. Think about your build as art. These are three dimensional pieces. You can't afford to have one boring angle. Look at your work in every single angle imaginable and ask yourself, is this thing on point? Because if it's not, you need to work on it. To help it be on point, simply add some weapons here and there, or more skulls, or add more to the story. Let the viewer put it together. That's it for this episode. Like always, mm. I had way too much chocolate. Mm. I knew it, I saw you eating it. Oh no, mistakes were made. It was so good though. Okay, like always, let's take the. Bleh. No, I can't say it. I already have an issue because I'm foreign, but. Alright, one more time, hold on. Like always, oh no, mm. alright I got it. Like always, let's thank the patrons, it's because of their support that I'm able to bring these videos to you. Check out the Patreon and consider supporting the channel. I got other videos you can definitely check out, but for now, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace! <laughs>